Okay. Uh, hello. Welcome, everybody, to the first ever episode of the Artist Collective Radio Show. I am the host is of the radio show, Shoshana Pearson. I am a actress, comedian, and writer and editor. And I have on the show with me a gaggle of amazing artists who are having a pop-up shop this Sunday. And so I brought them on to tell you a little bit more about what they do and what they will be offering this weekend. Uh, to start us off, I have Tara Brock, who is a textile artist, fashion designer. She is uh, very prolific and has created several different personas, if you will. She is the creator of the fancy house dress, London Blue Vintage, and mini cha-cha-cha. Uh, also with me is Jennifer Christie, who is also extremely prolific. She's a mixed media artist whose work focuses on the idea of impermanence and transformation, which is something I think we can all relate to right now, uh, really hits home with most of us. She is the creator and founder of Jennifer Christie Art. And through that, she offers one of a kind paintings, drawings, and jewelry creations. Uh, including handcrafted handbags, um, all from paintings uh, that she has uh, drawn herself, done herself. And then finally, we have Karen Ryan, who is a culinary artist who has delighted us with her um, amazing dishes. She is the founder of Pictish Pies and Provisions, whose savory pies are inspired by her Scottish upbringing her mom's amazing culinary skills as well that she thankfully passed on to Karen for all of our benefits and the traditional Scottish recipes that she grew up. I can attest to the fabulousness of all of these women's work and I can't wait for all of you to find out more about them. So this coming Sunday on April 25th, they will have a pop-up shop selling their wares at Consola Studio in Oak Cliff from 12 to 6, and we'll give you more details uh, with the uh, address and all that later on in the show. Uh, they'll have vintage fashion, one-of-a-kind art pieces, and some of those savory pies I mentioned. So let's dig in and talk to them a little bit about what they do. Um, so tell me how long you guys have known each other. Tell me where the idea for the pop-up shop came together and how this all this whole thing started. Tara, right, well, how about you? I'll start. So the, my husband runs Consalvo Studio and he kind of took it over, I guess a year and a half ago, but not long after he took it over, COVID happened. And he had this front room that is just sort of empty and um, nobody used it. And I had all of my inventory here at the house in all of the closets, in um, all of the, <laughs> the rooms. And as he's working from home more, um, he's like, hey, I got an idea. Why don't you move your stuff to the studio and you could have like your, little, your inventory there, you could have a little shop. And um, I, I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Um, and you know, we sounds like a win win situation. It is, it is. And so that's kind of how that came about. Um, and then with the pop ups, um, listing inventory online is very time consuming. You have to measure clothing, because vintage clothing, the sizes don't don't match modern sizes. So if it says it's a size 10 from 1967, it's probably a size two or four and so you measure everything and things were altered and custom fit so um it's time consuming and i with my inventory being away from home and my kids being at school i wasn't doing a great job at listing things so i did a pop-up in um december before the holidays covid numbers were got super high right at the time where the pop-up happens and I had planned it like two months before. So it was a good pop-up, but that's sort of where it started. You know, I didn't have a lot of people, a lot of people ended up deciding not to go, which was totally fine with me because the numbers were high. 
Um, now we have a lot of people that have been vaccinated and I thought a spring pop up is a great idea and it's a good time um, for people to get out. People are more wanting to, to shop more and um, I can purge some inventory and, and get my friends that are creative involved and um, we get a little, a little day. So that was going to be my next question. Uh, is that when did you bring in Jennifer and Karen and um, we'll have them t tell me about that. How did you wrangle them into the pop-up shop with you? I just texted, I sent Jennifer a text. <laughs> she does this great jewelry and she's always done great art. I have some of her art um, in my hallway of my Winston and um, I have some jewelry and um, Karen, um, Karen is everybody's mom when they're sick because we all want her to cook soup and stuff for us. <laughs> and we love the way she cooks. And I come from a long line of really good cooks, but I, and I, I can cook, but I prefer to eat Karen's food. So, um, <laughs> you know, we, we've ordered pies from her in the past. And then when we didn't have power, I was like, oh, what do you got? <laughs> She's like, I'm just cooking, cooking up a storm. And I'm like, oh, we don't have any power. So, yeah. So, so Karen, tell me, tell me about how you got started with um, cooking pies. And tell me how your um, pie making has sort of transformed into uh, an expression of care for your friends. Well, I think for me, uh, probably trips back to Scotland to see family, uh, you know, and just how widely available these amazing pastries are with delicious fillings, um, you know, and then thinking, oh, we can't get that in Texas, so I'm going to learn how to make them, you know. Um, my kids love them, my husband loves them, so I just felt like it was something that I needed to learn, and then, I, I don't know, I just, I, I just get so much joy from cooking, you know. And I think especially during the pandemic, we've had to kind of gravitate towards what gives us joy. And so for me, yeah. that's spending time in the kitchen and just creating, you know. So, um, so yeah, that's, it kind of evolved from the, this void in my life of no pies. <laughs> I'm like, well, I can make them here, you know. <laughs> People don't do that here. I mean, you can get New no. Zealand style pies, you can get you know, fruit pies, little handheld fruit pies, or, mm -hmm. you know, pecan pies, or you know, the, the big massive pies, but the, the little handheld savory pies, it's not really, I haven't seen it done very, you know, not in the way that I grew up used to, you know, so. I can't think of anywhere where we can get them, except no. from you. Yeah, I mean, some of the, some of the pubs, you know, they'll have, like, pie and chips, and they're good, but yeah, it's, it just seemed I mean, like they're all right. They're all right. <laughs> they're right. Yeah. It's just, I don't know, it just kind of started to be something I enjoy doing for friends. And I actually started uh, officially as a business right before the pandemic hit. So, like January and then February or early March, everything went belly up. And so it was all on hold, you know. So I, you know, I, I make for friends, but I haven't officially started churning up pies. <laughs> it's kind of on a, you know, interim basis, like here and there, but. Well, maybe this pop-up shop will give you some inspiration yeah. um, and movement towards that direction. So mm -hmm. Jennifer, tell me about you. Tell me about what your art is a little bit more for um, our, watchers, uh, viewers here, and tell me how the lockdown has transformed or influenced your your work and how you've had to pivot through this. Well, um, when Karen was just talking about how um, her cooking became an outlet for her, like during the pandemic, um, I think that's kind of what happened to me too. I've always, like Tara said, I've always been an artist and I've always made things but I've never I've never put so much effort into like making it um like making it my business and during the it didn't really like it wasn't a plan it just kind of like all of this is happening really organically 
right like around January, like right after New Year's, I just had this moment. And it's kind of funny because, and I'm backtracking, just like two months before this happened, you can ask Matt, my husband, I told the whole family, I was like, I'm just not making art anymore. I'm done making art. <laughs> and then something like just clicked in January. I was like, okay, I've been making all of this stuff, but I've never put effort into like really marketing it or like doing anything with it. I just love making stuff. I love painting. I love creating art. And so I just had this moment where I was like, I'm, this is going to be the year where like I start doing something with this and like taking it seriously. And like, as soon as I started thinking that, like people started just coming out of the woodworks. Like I have a friend who's opening a shop in East Dallas and then Tara texted me and I'm just like, okay, like I put this out in the universe and like everything's, you know, just kind of like unfolding. And um, I've just been making art like in, like an insane person since January. Like <laughs> it's all I do. Uh, I teach and I get I, home. Like, I mean, as soon as the weekend hits, I just like go to my, my studio <laughs> and just create. And my kids are older now, so it's a little bit easier to like, you know, have time to do that. And yeah, so. I, I love that. I love um, that sometimes we have to get to the, the end point before we can reset and and we get to the point where we just sort of throw up our hands and say that's it i can't i can't i'm just done and i think that this has been a year of that on so many levels and i've seen um in, in all three of you i've seen that um shift take place in really great and unexpected ways um, I'm, I'm, can you, do you feel comfortable telling me a little bit more about um, how, what happened, what was happening when you got to that point where you just wanted to give up or you just were, you were done doing art? Tell me a little bit more about what was. Um, um, yeah, I don't, I think I was just always feeling like kind of stressed out like time wise and just kind of pulled in like a million different directions and. I don't know. It was probably just like a week that I was feeling that way when I said that, but and like my whole family, like even my kids laughed at me. They're like, whatever, <laughs> you're not going to stop making art. Um, but I think I was just, you know, I just being a mom and then I teach full time and it was just, you know, at the, at the time I didn't have like, I, I was trying to figure out like where in my house, my studio was going to be, where it was going to be my work area. And like nothing was working out. And then over the holidays, I just like reorganized everything and found like a, a peaceful, happy space where I can create like right next to a window with natural light and like just everything just felt better after that. But I think it was just, I don't know, I think it was just, you know, finding the time for it. And somehow I just figured it out. Like I'm finding the time now. I don't know. I think I'm crazy. I don't sleep and I never stop, but <laughs> I'm having fun. So. I mean, I think that that's what it is. What's when you get inspired, you find the ener the energy just creates mm -hmm. itself, or or the ability to to carve out that space. Yeah, Tara, sure. what is the um, biggest lesson over the past year through all of the the pandemic and the lockdown, but also just the real shifts in culture that we've seen over the past year? Um, a lot of political social unrest. What's the biggest lesson over the past year that you have applied to your art that you will continue to apply after everything normalizes again? Okay, well, I'll, I'll try to make this short. Um, <laughs> so the biggest lesson is, is that um, you should try it if you want. And if you fail, try again or don't, it doesn't matter. Um, the reason I kind of went there is when COVID started, we had just lost my mother-in-law and um, a very close family friend um, had COVID and was hospitalized and was very sick for um, a very long time and almost did not make it this was at the very beginning. So at the very beginning of COVID, it was like a reality slap in the face of what this could be. So you're thinking of your own mortality, you're thinking of your parents, of your family, and 
and a lot of that. And I read a lot of just stuff. And um, I remember reading an article about polymaths where they always referred to them as men, as Renaissance men. <laughs> and I was like, why do they get to be men? And they'd list <laughs> like famous polymaths and they were all men. And I was, okay, I'm not gonna do it, but my middle finger is all. So anyway, um, that whole thing was, is, is it like a master of none? Is, are they masters of many things? And the article was really vague about that. And I remember thinking, I like to do a lot of things. I want to do a lot of things. I don't want to be defeated. I don't like to be defeated by a thing. So I'm like, if I'm going to put, okay, just like all of us have put together Ikea furniture, we are not going to let that furniture mm -hmm. get us down. We are going to make mm -hmm. it. It's true. So it's true. <laughs> I just decided I have nothing to lose. I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm going to try whatever I want. Some things I'll be good at, some things I won't. People genuine, some people will like things I do, some people won't, I don't care. I've never really cared. But um, it was always hard to self-promote and put myself out there. But then when you're, when you don't have to leave the house and you don't have to see those people face to face, much easier to do a stupid video and put it out there because you don't have to see them. <laughs> and so, Interesting. Does that, does, can anyone relate to that? I mean, that's, oh, kind of where, <laughs> that's kind of where all of everything came from was boredom and I wanna try things, I like to do things and it really doesn't matter if I'm good at this or that. I just, I wanna try it. Like I wanna learn mm -hmm. the guitar, it is not easy and I cannot do it right now. But someday, maybe. You gotta, you gotta build up those calluses. Karen, what about you? What's the biggest um, lesson learned? Uh, culturally, maybe not, maybe not even to you personally, but what's the biggest observation that you've made over the past year that's influenced your um, kitchen craft, if you will, and um, that you will continue to apply to your work going forward? Well, uh, I think for me, um, you know, I think we all dealt with the the prospect of COVID differently and mm -hmm. Tara kicked it into high gear, you know, she was like doing this today and I'm painting my house and I'm, you know, redecorating my yard and like she's just so busy and I I was kind of a kind of catatonic for the first few weeks like what is happening, mm -hmm. you know, this is terrible. When am I going to get to see my family again and are we going to make it and are we all going to get sick and so I kind of just was paralyzed a little bit in the beginning. But then, you know, I think just inspired by creators, Jeff, my husband is super creative, always busy. And, you know, friends like you guys too, you know, just, we can do this, we can get through this, we can be happy, we can find joy in our, in our day to day life. Um, yeah, being home all the time has made it easier in a way to get creative, you know, as far as thinking of recipes and it also makes me feel more connected to home, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So that's not insignificant because I haven't seen my family for a year and a half, you know, or, or more. So, um, right, because so they're yeah. in Scotland. Yeah, yeah, they're all in Scotland. Right. Everybody, I'm, I'm the only one here. But um, so, yeah, I think it, it just took me a while to get into gear, you know, to, to pick myself mm. up and slap myself ac across the face and move forward, you know? Um, yeah. So. Jennifer, how about you? What's the biggest lesson learned about, that you've learned about yourself from the social cultural shifts that we've seen over the past year that you will continue to apply to your work going forward? Um, I think it's so important for me to find time to create and mm. um, I will never say I'm not going to make art again because that's just crazy. I, I become a crazy person if I don't have an outlet and um, I just think, yeah, I mean, just kind of what Tara was saying too, like there's so many different things. I want to be a quilter but I hate sewing machines. So that's, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. We'll work and on it. yeah, like every day I just feel like 
Oh, I want to be a potter too. I, the same, like I, there's so many things I want to do and um, I just need to make sure that I carve out time to do that and, you know, not get frustrated if I'm not like in a, the perfect space or it's the perfect time or whatever, just like, you know, carve out that, that part of my life for myself and I'm much healthier for it. <laughs> so what I've heard um, you all say to one degree or another is that um, your different expressions of your art, whether it's clothing or painting, jewelry, et cetera, and making food, it's a way for you to feel alive. It's a way for you to celebrate life and um, connect with others and, and, and give life. It's, 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 it's quintessentially life-giving. And I also heard um, that one of the biggest changes is uh, the idea of self-promotion and um, really putting yourself out there as a marketable asset that you hadn't done before in a way that at, at one point it was, or, or previously it was just, this is what I do that's fun. And it became something like, this is what I have to do to live and breathe. And by the way, I'm going to make it something that I can do for the long term because I'm going to market it and I'm going to grow and I'm going to keep, keep doing it. And I think that that, the way that, that we as women learn to pivot and, you know, adjust for our families in our own sanity is amazing and impressive. And I think it, the three of you have blown me away this year and I've loved following each of you and how you have managed to just uh, transform what you do and how you do it and, and why you do it. I think the why is really big and it's really different. It certainly has um, evolved a lot this year for me. So tell us more about the pop-up shop. What can um, shoppers expect to see there? What's the kind of price point? Tell me what, tell me what's going to be there to offer for on offer. Well, um, I have a lot of vintage. Well, not, not a huge amount, like not like Dolly Python or, you know, but I have some good curated vintage. I have um, recycled clothing, which is more modern clothing that's either vintage inspired or um, designer. And then I have the stuff that I've made. Um, I have finally figured out um, a way to get my price points um, more manageable by making things more simple. Because <laughs> I tend to want to embellish more or pull things apart, but it's not realistic um, for, for me to spend that much time on something and for people to, to, you know, for me to price it that way. So price points are, are gonna be really, really reasonable. And um, we're talking, the only, there are only a few things that will be um, over like $100. And those would be things I spent a lot of time on or some really cool designer pieces that I have that I really probably don't want to sell and I want to keep them and you have to pay me for them if you want them. Um, I have, a, <laughs> it's true. That's just how it is. And, um, and every, anyone who owns an Etsy store or a vintage shop will probably tell you the same thing. I love this or, you know, they have something they love that they don't really want to sell, but if you're willing to pay this amount for it, then okay. And I have sold some things that I didn't want to sell. I have paintings like that. I totally relate. And I was like, oh no, they bought it for this amount. And I, yeah. I told my husband, like, what do I do? I sold it. And I was like, you know, and he's like, wrap it up, you know, and I'm like, oh, I'm it. but it's so, so easy those, for men. So my price points are going to be, you know, I have $5 t-shirts that are just random t-shirts that I found that I thought were interesting I don't you know for for dudes dudes are not my specialty they don't usually dress cool but uh <laughs> it's true and my husband lets me dress him so I was gonna say your husband dresses pretty good we don't but I don't you, know what you dress him I don't know anything about men's fashion um <laughs> but I did find some things and, and I have a I have some I have some stuff for for men but Mostly it's women and I have some kids things, um, price points, you know, I have um, $5 earrings that are new old stock. 
I kind of try to price reasonably based on what I paid for things and I try to balance it out. So mm -hmm. you might pay three or four bucks for one thing, but 25 cents for several other things. And so I just try to balance it out. Um, that way I have a lot of really cool sunglasses. <laughs> and most of these, <laughs> I have a very small, are pretty amazing. I have a very small head. Um, I have, <laughs> so on me, they don't look as cool as they would look on you guys. But um, <laughs> most of these sunglasses are like 10 bucks. And um, they'll all have a case. They'll all have a little bit of uh, something on them that I've embellished them with, but that's tasteful um, to make them my own. Yeah. I might have to get those sunglasses. I might have to be first in line. I have so I have so to grab I have those. so many cool ones, and um oh they're in white. I'm too. Really excited nice. about about. I like them. I like I do like the white. Okay, how about how about you, Karen and Jennifer? <laughs> what kind of price points do you are you expecting to have at your? Well, my pies are offerings. They're pretty small, and they're five dollars. So that's it. That's all I'm selling. Can't beat that. No, can't beat that. $5. Yeah. Five dollars. Yeah. I'm gonna have I'll have some that are ready to go and then some that are frozen and and I sell them by the four. So you have to buy four of them. So, and we're gonna have okay. a taste test. What what? Are we gonna have a sample? Well, any, I'm, maybe I'm trying to figure that out. I have a, a pie maker that makes small ones. Mm -hmm. So I'm, if I have time, I might try and do that. If not, I'll just uh, uh, what, what flavors? What flavors are you planning so on having? I am making chicken tikka, which is like an Indian curry. It's not really spicy, but it's really <clears throat> tasty and delicious. And then just a regular steak pie, which is just like a really tender beef stew and gravy inside pastry. And then mm. a vegetarian mm. one, mm. leek and mushroom with mm. fennel. So, so I'll have a vegetarian mm. one as well. <laughs> my mouth is already <laughs> watering <laughs> yeah how about you jennifer um so i will have everything starting i have some keychains and hair barrettes that start at like five dollars and then i'll have a couple little paintings and collages that are a hundred dollars and then everything in between okay yeah. sounds great um let, let's see what forms of payment cash only venmo what kind of things should people bring in order to buy your goods we i absolutely prefer uh venmo is the number one okay. if you want to use okay. uh cash app or paypal that's okay. fine and then um zelle which is another thing okay. we we really don't want to have cash around the joint um okay. if we don't have to we won't have a lot of uh, ways to make change so okay yeah yeah okay same and how about are you yeah. same for me venmo uh, square. yeah the square oh, swipe Jennifer, okay. oh, you do? oh yeah the square <laughs> great venmo so too. we're sounds like we're pretty pretty well covered for our cast cashless society so it's great yeah. um and then masks will be required for all attendees masks will be required. correct um okay i am planning on Any, making, uh uh thing of white sangria okay um, because we're gonna be there us ladies are gonna be there and if we're bored we're gonna need something to drink and then uh, <laughs> so that means show up around four and you'll get really good deals right <laughs> <laughs> we prefer not to drink the sangria ourselves we really want people to come out um if you've been vaccinated um that's gonna be great i know a lot of people have i have Jennifer, you have? Yes. Karen has. And um, um, I have a lot of friends that have been vaccinated. We still want masks, you know? Um, and it's gonna be a, a play by ear. We're gonna have to figure things out while we're there. Um, last time it was a by appointment only. And um, mm. this, this time we're, we're not, we don't need, I don't feel we need to do that. We can have the door open if we want and we can sit outside if we want if the weather is nice and um kind of hang out um and be socially distant at the same time and 
and and um, and people can look around and and buy stuff, you know. It sounds great. Tell me, give us one more time on the date, the location, and the time for, for the pop-up shop. So it's next Sunday, the 25th of um, April. And okay. um, it, we're pretty much opening at noon. And okay. noon to like 6 p.m. It doesn't get dark at 6 anymore, so that's nice. Um, the address, I don't know off the top of my head, but I can look <laughs> okay. up. Okay, I, it's at it can, it's at Consolvo Studio, but it's also there's no sign out front. But what I'll be doing is I will be putting a sign out front, um, like I did for the the last pop up. The back half of the place is the studio, and um, okay, it's it's pretty um, off limits. We'll be in the front sort of two areas. Um, it's on Edgefield. Let me find this. Um, uh, 2107 South Edgefield yeah, Avenue. Yeah, that's right. Okay. 20, and Dallas. Make sure you do South Edgefield on your map. If South. You have, okay. If you don't, you'll end up on a different part of Edgefield. Over by some. Like place. the northern part. Like, or by someone's really nice house or in Winnetka Heights okay. or something. We ordered pizza once <laughs> and we didn't put north or south on a that's a block over and they went to basically uh, a middle school and was like yeah. <laughs> okay well the more you know um, well that's all the questions i have for today about pop-up shops and art in the pandemic is there anything anybody else wants to add for either of those topics today anybody? you asked at the beginning how long we've known each other oh yes so it was how long have you guys known each other that very well so jennifer 15, 16 years? Yeah, Karen, I would say about, maybe 17. Okay, and uh, Karen, about 20 years now? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I've been here 24 years, so yeah, it's okay. been about that long. Really, that's it? Old school, what's that? That's it, only 24 yeah. years? I've lived, here. yeah, I've lived here for 24 years. Yeah, and I think, you know, we, uh we all met through other people and um and i i think the first time i met jennifer was at a halloween party it was at my house and then yes it's also when i met my husband yeah yeah oh, nice. it was a good night my husband and tara brock <laughs> yeah. and uh karen i i had seen karen and met karen before but the, the first time I remember meeting or seeing Karen was just she and Jeff were at a, a friend's wedding. And I, we, I took a picture of them because they were so cute. Like I have this, I didn't really know them, but I'm like, those people are so cute. And they kind of waved at Jerome and, and um, turns out she was pregnant, drinking wine, not knowing she was pregnant. But that's why she was glowing. That's why probably why I was so attracted to her. I was like, I just love that those people over there. I a picture because I'm I'm just drawn to them. So, yeah. so, and another yes. reason inviting friends to the pop up is that you know um, I want to support um, or push a little bit, which I in the past I haven't been this way, but support and kind of push my friends to do what they want to do, what they're, you know, what they're good at and mm. what they like. Because, um, you know, as Shoshana, as you know, you work sort of the trailblazer of our friends <laughs> when you sort of took up acting again after, you know, you started doing plays and stuff. And I was blown away by, um, I was just like, that's so cool that she's mm. doing that now. And um, yeah, so being supportive of of our friends and in whatever they want to do, except for like, you know, illegal activities and crime. <laughs> but, um, we're you know, trying to cut back on that part. We're, yeah. not gonna we're support, trying to cut back on the illegal activity. Yeah, we're not going to support our craft will save us. Idiot, you know, like, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, that's that. Well, I am very fortunate to call all of you friends. I can't remember 
meeting any of you. You guys have just always sort of been in my life, and I am so grateful that um, it's a it's a reciprocal sort of uh, inspiration. Um, you inspire me, I inspire you. Uh, go figure. But it's a reciprocal, and um, and I am very grateful for all of you, and I'm very grateful that you guys are going to bring your stuff to the wider world and offer uh, what you've got at this pop-up shop. And I can't wait for the pop-up shop and I can't see what, wait to see what you guys create next. So that's the end of our show, our first ever episode. If you um, are an artist yourself and would like a little promo for your event that you have coming up, or you just want to talk about life and art and doing both or all of it and how all that works, uh, shoot me a DM or contact me at shoshanapearson.com forward slash contact. Thanks guys. Have a good night. <laughs>